Okay, so the theme of StoryCorps is listen, honor, and share, which we've used in a lot of our advertisements for this. And I want to start out, oh, it's not gonna play it. Okay, let's just pause. I have it queued up just in case it wasn't gonna play it. I like to start off with this video, which is a great introduction um, from Dave Issey, who's the founder of StoryCorps. And it kind of explains it a little better than what I can, because sometimes things get lost in translation, I feel like, if it's not from the person who created it. So that's what we're gonna do here. So I am, no, you can't see it now. Let me know if there you, for some reason, can't hear the video. Hopefully you can hear this. <laughs> start by asking you one of the questions on my list, right? Anything you want. Okay. So what were you like as a kid? I was pretty weird. I didn't want to do anything but watch TV. And I spent a lot of time by myself. But I always liked talking to older people, like the waitress at the luncheonette near my house or my grandparents. I remember when I was just a few years older than you, your great-grandpa Abe and your great-grandma Rose and her sisters came over to our apartment for Thanksgiving. After dinner, I found this tape recorder lying around, and somehow I got the idea to interview them. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but I recorded their voices and stories, and I saw how much they loved being listened to. A few years later, your great-grandpa and your great-grandma and all her sisters passed away. But I remembered I'd made that tape, so I went looking for it, but I couldn't find it. Even now, when I go to your grandma's house, I go looking for that tape, just hoping it's gonna turn up. I don't get it. Why do you keep looking for it? Because it would make me so happy to hear those voices again, and I'd love to play that tape for you. You know, doing that recording really taught me something. You can find the most amazing stories from regular people. All you have to do is ask them about their lives and listen. Really? That's it? Yeah, it's simple. We can learn so much about the people all around us, even about the people we already know, just by taking the time to have a conversation. And if you pay just a little attention, you'll find wisdom and poetry in their words. Do people really want you to ask about their lives? Yeah, they do. Most people love to be listened to because it tells them how much their lives matter. All you need to ask are questions like, who is the most important person in your life? Or what are you proudest of? Really, listening closely is simple. When you're curious, treat people with respect, and have just a little courage to ask the important questions, great things are gonna happen. All right, so that's our starting video from Dave Issey. I haven't gotten any feedback from anyone, so I think you heard it. I know um, previous times, I've had some issue with videos over Zoom that have sound. Um, so hopefully that did work. And then we'll go back to our PowerPoint. So as kind of what you would have gathered, uh, the mission of StoryCorps is to preserve and share humanity's stories in order to build connections between people. And when we do this, we create a more just and compassionate world. So the core principles is that the, the interview is at the session uh, or at, at the heart of the story core. So that session that you do, it's where you treat participants with respect, care, and dignity. And uh, they have 
a relentless focus on sharing a wide diversity of, of participants. If you go to their website, they do have um, each month they feature um, people's stories and they kind of make it a little bit more professional and do um, an interview in person. Um, but the great thing about StoryCorps is it's all voice recorded. So you might have pictures that are attached to the interview, but it's all voice, no video. And you just get to hear people's story in their own voice, which I think is really great. And it's a public service. Uh, so they have StoryCorps booths all over the US. Right now, obviously, because of the pandemic, those are currently closed. Uh, they also have a, a little mobile van that they have going around the country too. Uh, and they have put a pause on that, but they have plans to start it up again. So tonight, what we're going to look at is the app that they have created. So you can do it when you're in person with somebody and do an interview with somebody, or um, they have a new thing called StoryCorps Connect, and it's how you can do it virtually if you're not in the same place as the other person, if you're trying to practice social distancing to stay healthy and safe, um, that's another option. So we're gonna look at both of those. And you probably asked me, well, why is this important? Why should we do this? Uh, really, the goal is just to interview your friends, family, uh, community members about your life. Um, so it could be a specific event that you want to capture, that could be a moment in history, or it could be that you're just trying to complete genealogy of your family and you want the stories of people in their lives. Whatever the reason, it gives voice and saves it for other generations to, to hear. Um, there's something really powerful about hearing the stories through people's voices, especially after they're gone. So here I have um, done some screenshots of what the app looks like. And if you are interested in the app yourself, you can download it free from um, an app store for your device. And it looks, once you look at it, it does look very similar to the website. Um, so that's a great thing about it. it it's kind of familiar. But this is nice when you are with the person that you're interviewing. When I first started getting into StoryCorps, um, it was probably six years ago, um, I interviewed my grandmother. So, and I did it with the app. I did it during Christmas when we were visiting. Um, and I wanted to, to capture her answers about, you know, what was her childhood like growing up? Um, what was it like when she met my grandfather? What was it like when she started having children, you know, how, how did my mom behave, things like that. And I just wanted that in her voice because I know at some point, you know, she's not gonna be with us anymore. And having that memento to go back to and, and hear her voice is almost priceless. So when you open up the app, this is what it would look like. You have a little menu, you can, get to your interviews. You can have, there's like helpful hints. Um, and when you click on my interviews, this is the only interview I had here in the middle. So that was my grandmother. And you could just hit play right away after you've already done it. And then they also have this listen section. And that's why I have that picture on the right side. So that's where you can just go through and look at what other people are posting. You can, when you create the interview to decide whether or not you wanna make it public uh, so that people, other people can see it. Um, and also, unless you say you don't want it, uh, it does get also archived in um, an online archive and for the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. Um, so it is something that not only is it gonna be on in the app and then in your profile online, but it's also, going to be archived for you. The helpful hint section is really great. They have a getting started that kind of tells you, you know, get inspired, help on who, who to choose as a partner and how to prepare your questions, how to organize it. Uh, and then it does give you some tips for recording. So in the beginning, they ask you start off with stating your name, age, what the date is, where you're recording, 
your relationship to the person and what their name is. And then they also give you some tips on how to make your recording better, how to uh, block out to any outside noise, things like that. So it's, it gives you everything. It helps you prepare for the interview. So you set up the interview. You can write the a title for the interview. You put all of the participants names and it helps you select questions. Uh, you can also make your own, uh, but they do have some, some quick ones there ready for you that you can add to your list. So during your interview, you can pull up your list and have it right in your hand instead of um, having to write it uh, and have a piece of paper with you, you can do it on there, um, either or really. And then the record section, um, it gives you some directions, which is really nice about what to do before you start. Um, so, you know, it tells you, you can swipe left to right to get to the different questions. Uh, when you're recording, keep the microphone um, from six to eight inches from the person and you, so kind of in the middle. Um, and then you can tap the little check mark to make sure that you know later that you did ask all those questions. And then once you've gone through that, you can tap on the blue record button. So if you look down at the bottom of the picture, there's this record button. It tells you how much time has elapsed and how much you have remaining. They want you to try and keep your interview at 45 minutes. If you are doing an extensive interview, I usually suggest that you kind of um, piece out each section of questions. So you could have 45 minutes of just talking about childhood stuff. You could do 45 minutes about a certain event in their life. Um, or if it's you're only recording about a certain event, then 45 minutes might be enough. So that's kind of a quick overview with the app. Um, again, if that's something you're interested in doing, you can download that for free and get started. The one thing that I want to focus on tonight and that we're, I'll show you live here is StoryCorps Connect. And like I said, this is something that you can use when you have to be separate from each other. They started this last year, um, not too long after the pandemic started and everything in the country kind of started shutting down. So I guess it's always good to keep in mind that there are bugs here and there that they're always trying to fix. Uh, they do have a very good help section uh, for StoryCorps Connect and they do respond if you try to go through and um, figure out technical issues with them if you email them. So, you know, I've had some experience with that and they're very responsive. But overall, I think it's a pretty good product. So if you've already got the app, your account information logs you into uh, the archive online. Otherwise, you would have to make an account if you don't. So you can see down here at the bottom, uh, when you go to StoryCorps archive, then um, you would click down here. You can't see it, but it says create an account or log in. And then you just do your normal first name, last name, make up a username, your email address and a password. And it's free account. And again, you can use it with the app. The main parts of your app are part of the menu up in the top right corner. When you click on there, you get your interviews and profile, edit your profile, upload an existing interview. So if you had an interview that you use, you, you recorded it either with the app or um, with a different recording device. So a recording device that has nothing to do with StoryCorps or your smartphone um, or a tablet, 
uh, but it is in like an MP4 format, then you can upload that to it as well. This is a section right here that you'd want to pay attention to, record with StoryCorps Connect. You can also create a community, create question lists, and then there's your logout button. And when I click on my profile, this is kind of what you see, see how many interviews there are. If you're part of any communities, it kind of just gives you all the, the data there. If you were to click on the upload an existing interview in the menu, this is what would pop up. So like I said, it would need, oops, sorry, not MP4. It would need to be an MP3 um, or one of these other formats. And they do have a maximum file size. So that's uh, good to keep in mind. You'd have to split things up into separate files if it's larger than that. And then you can go through and fill in any information that you want. You don't have to fill in everything, um, but you know you can put a title, a description. You do have to put the name of the participants. And that is a requirement to be able to archive anything. Then you can make keywords. That's helpful for people if uh, you're making this public, which is something that you find under privacy. Um, you can say whether or not it's going to be public to people and whether or not you want to post it in a community. Now you can find these same instructions on the actual page when you're doing uh, StoryCorps Connect and also in your handout. Um, but it's just a general blanket step by step. Here's what you do. So obviously pick somebody that you want to interview is your first um, step. Then you can prepare uh, your interview with lists of questions and then uh, log in to your account. And here you can, that question list that you thought up, you can also create that if you want to, um, but you would visit the StoryCorps Connect recording section that was in that right corner menu that I showed you. And then uh, there will be a send an email to your partner button. Once they have come on, you hit the start recording button. You also only have 45 minutes to record. And there's also a stop recording button. And then there's also a save interview button. So pay attention to these two buttons um, because if you stop it but don't save it, then it's all just gonna be gone. And then when you're saving it, you would fill in that information, you know, title, keywords, participants, names, things like that. And once you do finish that, um, you are able to share that interview to anyone in an email, a message, or uh, copy and pasting the link for it. And then it also is archived, like I said, in the Library of Congress. And also remember, it can take up to 30 minutes to process the whole file before you can access it. Uh, this is something that uh, we ran into. We did a whole bunch of interviews as staff members um, with each other to just kind of document what staff have been doing in the library and how they've been feeling about things uh, when the when the pandemic um, had been going on for a while. That was something that we did in the fall. Um, and I'll show you that in a second, but a lot of people didn't realize it took 30 minutes. So then, you know, they thought it was gone, it was lost, it didn't save it, but it was just, took some time. And like I said, so once you click on the StoryCorps Connect button, Oops. There is the spot where you have, you can either copy and paste this whole link and put it into like a message or an email, or you can just do the email invite. So you would type in their email address and then click on this button and wait for it to tell you that it sent the email. And you would just wait for the person to click on there and connect. I always do that.
me and PowerPoint just don't always play along well together. And if you notice the square down at the bottom, that's where the, the interview is going to show. Um, that's where you're going to be able to see the video of the other person. Uh, so you will be able to actually see them. But when it's recording, it's just recording your voice. It does take a few pictures during that time that you can choose to have, have as a cover image for the interview. Uh, but that is the only time. And you don't have to use those at all if you don't want to. But remember, it's only recording your voice, not the image. They just have the video there so that it's easier to do the interview. I think it's, it's nice to see people, especially if this is something that you're doing with a family member to be able to see them. And there's the start recording audio button. And then down at the bottom, there's this. Right. After you say start recording audio, then there's finish interview. And then after that, this green save interview to archive button that I have down at the bottom. If you choose, uh, we do have a Middleton community page that we've created. Uh, so that's a place where um, anybody in Middleton can put their interviews in a community. And we're also hoping that in the future, um, once, once things maybe get to, to a little bit more normal than what we've had in the last year, um, that we'll be able to kind of spread out with other organizations in Middleton to start putting in um, history of Middleton. And so we have um, uh, audio files for it. Uh, this is something that we've been kind of looking forward to as we were trying to create our local history room uh, downstairs on the second floor. We'll look at that maybe later. So let's go look at it live. I'm going to quick stop share and reshare because it acts funny when I don't do that. So let's do share on the days file. Okay, so few things. First, this is the regular main storycore.org website. This is where they have their features for the month. So this month they're doing Black History. So they have animated videos that they have audio for, and then they have some other ones that they are featuring. And as you scroll down, they have other collections. And each Thanksgiving as well, they do something called the Great Thanksgiving Listen. And it's, it's really good. Um, they always choose something, a different story to talk about. And they encourage people as they get together for holidays to you know, record each other and give interviews and just learn about your family's lives around you if you don't know that much about their history. This is the Archive StoryCorps website. This is where StoryCorps Connect lives and where your profile is. So you want to click on sign in. I'm going to go into my personal one so you can see my interview that I have in there. So if you notice, it opens up right away to my profile area. And there is my one completed interview. This one is a little draft of something that I played around with and then it's just stuck there. So I need to delete that. If you ever need to delete any of these, there is this little section. I hit delete, it doesn't wanna do anything. Uh, you can do create interview here and that's how you could upload an existing one or you can also click on your menu and do the uploading existing one as well. 
Here's that section I was showing you before. It's got all of, this is the same information that you would put in after every interview. So like I said, um, you can decide if you want it to be public or if you only want StoryCorps community people to see it or if it's completely private and only you can send invitations for people to look at it. This is where you would add your interview to a community if you follow a community. So I've already selected that I follow the Middleton community. And that's where I'd make my checkbox. That's that. So the record with StoryCorps Connect. So it's a little clunky. I wish they wouldn't have it quite like this, but after you click that button, you have to scroll down and then click on this record your story using StoryCorps Connect. I wish it was just a one step, but it's a two stepper. It's going to ask if you can use camera and microphone if you have it built in. Oh, we say allow, otherwise, you're not going to be able to do any of this. So, also, then here is the spot where your URL goes in. You can copy and paste that and send it to somebody. Or you can, oops, you can do the invite via email. You can type in an email here. And then there's the start recording audio button. If you notice as I scroll down, you can see me. I don't know if you can see me in real time right now. I know I can, but I don't, I'm not sure how Zoom does this. Um, but it, has this button for muting and unmuting here. Can you hear me now? No. Mm. How about now? Better now? Okay. <laughs> it could be because I was on the, the StoryCorps Connect recording page. Um, things might get a little silly uh, with Zoom there. But if you notice when I was in that, uh, I had a picture of me and that is, you're gonna be in the small one and the person that you're uh, interviewing would be the larger square that was grayed out because I didn't have anybody there yet. And there was a microphone on my my picture where I could mute it and unmute it. Um, that's really helpful if there's background noise um, around you. So when you're not speaking, you can mute it while the other person is speaking. Um, and it's just, it's really simple once you get to that page. You know, they have very clear, distinct buttons on start interview, end interview, and save. And the video works pretty well. Um, do know though, one thing that we found out was when you're doing your interview, before you hit the record button, you are seeing and speaking to the person on that page. However, when you click on the, um, save but or you know end audio or end record button then you only have a few seconds before you no longer can see and continue to talk to the other person uh, so if you have a different way of speaking to them um, whether it's on your phone or text or um, a messaging um, thing of sorts it's it's good to remember that when you hit that finish button it's, it means really that you're finished and you're not going to be able to speak to them anymore. Uh, so just be aware of that. We had it cut us off a few times when we were trying to talk about, okay, so how do we save this? How do we do, you know, the rest of the stuff uh, when we were playing around with it? So I want to go back. 
I want to show you the create a question list. So you can create your own custom questions. Uh, once you've typed them in here, you hit add question. But they have a whole bunch of other questions. They kind of have like what are known as like the best ones. Uh, they have some stuff that they're featuring. One small step. About Stonewall. I think that was the anniversary of Stonewall. Then you have more questions. So you have questions for parents, grandparents, family heritage questions. Um, if you're a first generation of a family doing something, growing up, school, love and relationships, working, religion and spirituality, serious illness. Uh, so there's a lot of different things here. You can email the question list to people. So if you want people to review things ahead of time, that's something you can do or to yourself. Um, there's also this start over button if you decide that you messed up. Um, and then you can also print it out. That's always nice to have too. So I wanna go back. Oh, I got a whole bunch of things because I was playing. Um, I wanna show you when you click into an interview what it looks like. So there's one of the, the images I had from our interview. This is back in 2015. And then you have your play and your stop button. Um, if you ever wanna share the interview, this is how you can get, um, download it to your computer and share it, or you can give somebody the link to it, things like that, and then they'll have access to it. I don't know if I try to play this, if this is gonna. All right, I'm recording. Okay. And you can jump around. Uh, how long did you cease by the time we were? That uh, stuff. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. Um, was he around a lot or was he yourself? Oh yeah, he was, all the time? no, he was home. I think this is my grandmother talking about her dad. He came home for dinner every oh, day. Yes. <laughs> I, it was, uh, he was out there all the time. Yeah, he had a good, growing up, I mean, strict, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we learned to agree with it. What are you going to do? What was your parents' names? I don't know uh, Dad was Elmer, and no middle name. And mother was Sylvia. So like I said, you can click around and go further in. Um, I think one of the great things about doing this is that over the years, you know, I've heard many, many little stories here and there from my grandmother. But this is also where I found out that when she was in high school, so she, she lives in uh, Southern Minnesota and there's a lot of little farming towns everywhere in Southern Minnesota and um, all the schools, she said in towns back then, they would kind of be at war with each other like the kids in the schools. So she was in an all girl gang and she would get in fights with other girl gangs from other uh, neighboring towns. So, I thought that was funny. I had no idea um, and that she would get in like actual brawls where she would hit other girls. <laughs> and so um, just finding out, you know, like things about that, that, that it makes more sense on why my grandmother can sometimes be super spicy and um, a little, a little bit of a rebel. And, um, you know, I kind of would get little tidbits of that uh, throughout growing up and, and hearing um, stories, but I never heard that one before. So I think it's really fun just to find out all these new things about people that you didn't know, uh, as well as things like documenting events in history. Um, it really can be super versatile in how you can use this tool. Um, it can just be used for so many different things.
but I won't bore you too much with, <laughs> with my own family. Um, it's, I wanna show you now the community. So let's see here, if I go here, go to communities. So here, um, we don't have anything put in here yet because we're still kind of working on stuff, but uh, we do have our question list from um, what we did for the library. So I'm going to click on the libraries page. So we're working on some stuff, like I said, with staff members. Um, and this is available for you to check out if you'd like. Um, so we have um, me interviewing uh, Liz Zimdars, who is our head of adult services. Um, and then I also interviewed, or she interviewed me. Um, and then we have some other staff members that interviewed each other. Uh, and we have our question list. So I'll click on the question list. And you can look and see, you know, what are the types of questions that we answered? Um, you know, do you have any recommendations on self-care uh, during the pandemic? If there's anything you've been doing, are there good things that have come out of the pandemic for you? What has been your favorite thing to do with books, movies, or TV during the pandemic? And some more questions about just your, their, you know, their jobs at, at the library. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, just to get to know a few of our staff members that have done the interviews so far uh, and how things have been going for us. Um, definitely take a look so you can find, we're just labeled as Middleton Public Library uh, and we are a part of the Middleton community. So if you look up the community of Middleton, that's also another place that you can find us. And then our question lists are linked there too. And again, I know it's, it's a little sparse. This is something that we're just getting started. We're hoping in the future, this is something that will be bigger and we'll have a lot more fun with and that the community can get to know more and more as we continue our journey with it. Let's see. Oh yeah, and this edit profile, this is also like, you don't have to have a picture. I just decided to put one. Um, you can put in a small amount of information about yourself, but you don't need to either. Some people like putting that in, so it's, it's available there. Um, if you ever wanna look at other people's stuff, uh, the interview section, um, you can, search by certain keywords, or you can kind of use stuff on the side here, your limiters to look. Um, but these are, I think the ones that come at the top, yeah, relevant. So they're the ones that are probably the most popular, most watched. And I know that COVID stories or um, interviews about how people have been doing during the pandemic have been a hot thing um, for people to do here on StoryCorps. So you can find a lot of other uh, stuff like that if you're interested. But it's, you can find things on almost every topic. Same thing with communities, if you wanted to look for other communities to join. You know, you can join other organizations, there's some schools and other things that have that. So does anybody have any questions? I know it's a lot to take in. You can unmute yourself, feel free, we're a small group here, or you can put it in the chat. See, so it's kind of a, a thing where you definitely need to play a little bit with it on your own. Um, I think before you might have a whole lot of questions. Oh, one more thing I'll show you here quick is the help section. So if you have problems, 
So there's a blue button down at the bottom that says help. So here you can start typing in. So if you have an issue with StoryCorps Connect. So if you notice, like I had a draft one. So this is a, a good one. How do I complete a draft story? And they have some different answers. And they even have some images in their answers. Uh, so they really try to go step by step and be helpful. And they also have things like interactive tutorials for visual people. Uh, so if you need it explained in a different way, uh, they have a little tutorial that way too. The first step is to log in to archive.store. Okay, looks like it talks to you too. That's great for the people who need that. Um, so yeah, so there's just different different ways that they try and help you. And then there also is this leave us a message. So this is something that I had to do when I had an issue. We had lost um, a recording because things were blank. Um, so you can email them and they do have uh, copies of things sometimes if the software caught it in time and they might have um, something that they can email back to you so that you can upload it. All right. I don't see any questions right now. It looks like before Bob left, he said um, he agrees that you really need to try and play with it. Um, if you do have questions, you can always uh, email the uh, info at midlibrary.org and direct it uh, to me, Amanda, um, if you have questions. Or I think also on my on the handout, I also have my uh, email address on there as well, which is just amandab at midlibrary.org. Uh, and you can ask questions if you seem to have issues. Um, and I also have been, if people are, I'm gonna stop my share here. Um, if people have been needing it, I've also been um, allowing people to do um, online virtual techno minutes. Um, so if we could do stuff by phone or uh, we could set up a Zoom call or something that lets us see each other while we're trying to help. Um, but that's always an option too, if you felt like you needed help. But that is all I have for you tonight. So thank you so much for coming.